Council meeting of April 21st, 2016. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight and I will be presiding tonight. Um, uh, as per our custom, we invite the public to speak and public comment before we convene. Um, there are some guidelines, however. We ask that you keep your comments and remarks to under three minutes. You're allowed to speak on any topic of your choosing uh, while acknowledging and respecting the decorum of the chamber. Um, if you feel that you need to go over three minutes, please don't, please don't, because there are lots of people who want to talk, and if if you do, I'll, I'll ask you politely to stop. If you start to filibuster, I will tell you to stop, and then we, if you continue, then we'll, well, I was gonna say shut off the cameras, but that's moot at this point, but we'll wait until you, we'll, we'll essentially not resume until you're finished and leave. So um, the other thing I ask, is when you come up, when I call your name, and by the way, you can speak even if your name's not on this list. Um, when I call your name, please come up, state your name, restate your name, correct my pronunciation, and uh, also your address, please. And then you're off to the races. And with that, we start with Suzanne Beck, please. about the water and sewer policy gave you, I thought a really good perspective, uh, a pretty complete, complete picture of the issues that were raised by the business community and that we had talked about, but you heard it firsthand from <coughs> the businesses that was particularly pleased that the number of people that showed up and of course you also heard from a number of residents, which was terrific. So I'd like to thank the mayor for organizing it and the business community for turning out for it. I'm also glad that many of the council members could attend um, and hear their feedback firsthand, and I'd like to thank NCTV for filming it, too. So one of the issues that came up um, pretty often, there were a lot of the larger users in the audience, which was a good thing, since they are the ones that are having the greatest impact, and one of the issues that came up were the, fire, um, the new fire suppression fees. So I would urge you to um, act on the mayor's proposal to eliminate those fees for this year. I thought that was, um, I'd like to acknowledge the may mayor for being so responsive to that particular concern um, in the proposal that he's given you as an amendment to the original. And I, you know, as it turned out, the two week delay uh, that you were so gracious to extend was the right amount of time to surface the, the issues. I'm pretty, pretty certain all of the issues have been raised at this point. So. Um, thank you for considering the Chamber's input in your process, and I wish you good luck in taking the vote tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Paul Borneo, please. Hello, counselors. Uh, my name's Paul Borneo. Uh, I live at um, 107 North Street in Northampton. I'm 53, software developer. I've lived in the Valley for seven years in Northampton for nine. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I've been investigating the Northampton undercover police for the last two years, and in their entrapment ruses that they're using at Bishop's Lounge to entrap innocent people into committing crimes. Uh, what they're essentially doing is, is uh, the porch at Bishop's Lounge, they're allowing people to smoke marijuana there, creating an environment in which they can run entrapment ruses on the public in order to arrest or subjugate them, I'm not sure. Uh, I spent two years and about 300 nights out there watching this without their knowledge. The reason I did this is because I was targeted by the Northampton Police for entrapment about three years ago when I went to my doctor and got a recommendation for medical marijuana when it first started. As soon as I did that, they started asking me if I would share some medical marijuana. And as it turns out, the, the medical marijuana law has a stipulation in it which prevents the transfer of medical marijuana to the black market, and there's a five-year mandatory minimum prison sentence for that. They decided, apparently, that they were going to have me share some medical marijuana and get me for that. And when I didn't do that at Bishop's Lounge, they hacked into my phone, hacked into my computer, moved an undercover cop in next door to me, which freaked me out. I was like hiding in my house, and I was like, oh my gosh, can't even speak in my own house. And then on the few times, I stopped going out to the bar, and then the few times that I went out, they had undercover cops 
accost me or, or find me. I'd go out to the bicycle clinic and a, and a person would come along and ask me for some medical marijuana. I, I put a personal ad in and they, they answered my personal ad 20 minutes later and I went to this person's house. It was obviously a cop set up. First thing she asked me, is this medical? She tried to get me drunk. Spent five hours trying to get me drunk. And it's crazy. So I decided that the right thing to do was to go back out and figure out what the heck was going on. I've written a book about it called Speakeasy. And that book details my experiences and then my investigation to going out and finding out what the cops are up to at Bishop's Lounge. Um, I've taken that book. Well, the reason that I'm speaking to you now and not just publishing the book is that when the police, the police overheard me apparently speaking about the book because two weeks later, Detective Briggs and a thug showed up at Bishop's Lounge and tried to intimidate me. Yeah. So um, what I've done is I've taken that book, I've shortened it down into a 40-minute um, documentary, essentially. I put it on YouTube for everybody to see. And that just goes through the whole detail, what they did to me, and then what I found out they're doing to the public at Bishop's Lounge. I've spoken, uh, yesterday I spoke to the captain about it and invited him to have an open discussion about it. And his response was a brick wall that said, um, said uh, file a complaint on it. I spoke to the mayor's office, same thing. So I'm coming to you guys and kind of putting it in your hands. Uh, I'm not going to file a complaint. That's not. I'm not interested in fighting this. I'm interested in providing, providing information. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Harriet Brickman, please. Dramatic act to follow. I'm Harriet Brickman. I live with Tom Reardon at 53 Bottoms Road, the farm at the end of the road. I want to thank the city council for revisiting the issue of Bottoms Road two weeks ago and coming to a unanimous decision to accept Bottoms Road as a city street following the recommendation and plan of the DPW. Two weeks ago, you made reference to a letter from the planning board which had recommended against that decision. I have since read that letter and had a conversation with Wayne Fiden, and while the concerns of the planning board are valid in general, they are not at all applicable to Bottoms Road, either its history or common use. This has been an unusually long and thoughtful process. Everyone concerned is in accord, and I urge the City Council in its second vote tonight to once again accept Bottoms Road as a city street. Thank you very much. Emory Ford, please. I'm Emory Ford. <clears throat> I live at 364 Spring Street in Florence. At the previous uh, council meeting, uh, I was very disappointed that the council did not vote on the mayor's proposal on the rate structure. It was suggested at the time that this had not been a transparent process. Uh, after the meeting, I went to the internet and I identified 13 times that this subject had been presented to the public. It seems to me once a month for a year is a reasonable level of transparency. And I urge tonight that you vote on this matter. There was some concern about what the objectives were for the rate increase. Well, to help with that, tonight I brought to you what those objectives were, and they've been published for several months now. When the charter was revised, the mayor became the chief executive officer of the city. The council was to approve or disapprove, vote up or down, his proposals. The mayor did his job in coming before you was something to vote on. You kicked the can down the road. I think that's unacceptable. I, for one, voted for at least three of you here to vote on measures not to tell the mayor how to do his job. The mayor did his job. He came before you with something to vote on. It was relatively transparent. So tonight, I urge you tonight to vote. And with your permission, I would like to present this to the president of the council in case there's some debate about whether this has been a transparent process or not. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Uh, Lily Lombard, please. Hi, I'm Lily Lombard. I'm at 39 on Rose Street. Um, I'm here first um, in my capacity as chair of the Northampton Public Shade Tree Commission. Uh, Arbor Day is a week from tomorrow, tomorrow being Earth Day, another really important day. Um, and I, I want to commend the city for, in the past year, really completely turning around our approach to our, our urban forest. Um, I commend the mayor first and foremost, and I know he's going to read a, an Arbor Day proclamation, which I'll um, gladly sit for. And um, I want to let you know that our commission, in collaboration with the tree warden, is working really hard to reforest our city. Um, for Arbor Day, we are um, working with all four elementary schools to plant trees at the schools. We're involving the kids, um, and we're teaching a lot about the just staggering number of benefits that trees offer to our community and how to care for trees. Um, now I'm going to take my, um, my chair hat off and speak as a, a private citizen. I want to say that I do support the, um, the new rate structure, the tiered system for, um, for water and sewer fees in the city of Northampton. And I just want to tie it to trees for a second because um, some really impressive cities around the nation, Philadelphia being one, Portland being other, have invested in green infrastructure as a way of managing their stormwater and their water treatment. And I, I hope that we will seriously um, invest a lot more dollars into that system, which um, does the work for us and appreciates in value over time. So I'm in favor of it. Um, and I also want to say that as a um, uh, multi-unit property owner, I hear some um, worries about the water fees being um, passed on to renters. I, I, I understand that part. What I do and what I think should be encouraged is um, I submeter all the water on my units so that my uh, tenants um, know exactly what they're paying for. They're paying only for what they use. Um, they're given all the water conservation measures to use as little as water as they, as they can to be as um, conservative about water as they can. And so, you know, they won't be seeing um, you know, uh, increases in rent rolled over f because of some burden that I have. So um, I think that's one approach to take with renters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Marty Nathan, please. Hi, I'm Marty Nathan. I'm at 24 Massasoit Street, and I will be very brief. I came here tonight because I couldn't make it to the forum uh, last week because I was working, and I wanted to support the tiered rate structure for the water and sewer. I think that it's a great idea, and um, people, at, at companies who are using water for prop, profit are not the same as people who are using water to drink. I share Councillor Adams' concern about uh, renters, but I think, as Lily has said, it is up to the landlord to decide whether to pass that on. Uh, the increased rate of water, you, uh, the increased rate structure onto um, their tenants. And I really hope that you vote tonight and that you vote for the mayor's proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lydia Capel. Lydia is the last person. Does anyone else wish to speak at this time? Dr. Gabe. I'm Bennett Gabe. Uh, my wife, Lily, and I, who I'm speaking on behalf of, we own property on Center Court, 9 and 19. And um, last week, we unexpectedly heard about um, Bottoms Road being uh, considered a uh, public street. So uh, basically, we're here, I'm here, and Lily will be here momentarily to uh, <coughs> bring Center Court up again as a possibility to be considered a, center, uh, a city street. Um, Basically, the question is, what does Bottoms Road have that's, uh, to offer to the city that, uh, that Center Court doesn't? Uh, it seems to us that basically it's much more of a, uh, Center Court is a much more of a, uh, a part of the city. And uh, that's basically it. So I'd like to raise that again and uh, 
for your consideration. Thank you very much. <coughs> Anyone else would like to speak at this time? Going once, going twice. Uh, Lily, um, do you want to speak? Because I was just about to close public comment. Do you want to speak? Uh, it's fine if you're redundant if you want to speak. Sure, I never. So, uh, and I'll remind you, to <coughs> state your name and address for the. Uh, I'm Lily Gay, uh, 608 West Hampton Road in Florence. Uh, my husband Ben and I own two properties at Center Court, 9 and 19. Uh, we're back again, like a bad dream. Uh, we don't give up. And uh, Bottoms Road. Broached yet again our concern and our bewilderment, and I think it's a good example of um, what we feel is an inequity. Um, I assume Bennett raised the, our questions of what are the criteria that the Bottoms Road have that uh, brings them to the top and leaves us at the bottom of eligibility, and. Um, are they going to have parking meters? Because somehow that seemed to be some sort of an undercurrent of concern about where would you put the parking meters in center court. I don't know if that's accurate or just hearsay, because obviously you can't put parking meters in center court. So I uh, thank you all. I sent a letter uh, to all the counselors and uh, asked my tenants and neighbors to do the same. I think some of them did. So thank you for your. Uh, attention once again and consideration and uh, revisiting this once again. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Uh, no one else? Okay. I'm going to ask the administrative assistant to please call the roll. Councilor Adams. Here. Here. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor White. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Present. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. Councilor Schiller. Here. We have a quorum. Uh, Councilor Murphy is missing with excuse. Um, uh, one minute announcements. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yeah, I got this email today in reference to all programs, services, and activities will be canceled. And the senior center will be closed on April 25th due to the move of the fitness center. Okay. Anyone else? Um, I have this from the Veterans Council of Northampton. This is relative to the 2016 Memorial Day Parade. Um, this is to counselors, but also to alert to the public that uh, the Memorial Day Parade in Florence was a great success due to everyone's patriotism and participation. Thank you, they say. We're hoping that this year's Memorial Day Parade in uh, Florence will be just as successful. We earnestly look forward to your continued support. And they ask us to um, notify them who is going to be among the council is going to be attending. But um, for the this is a this is a great parade that's open to the public and it is in Florence and does you know, follows Florence unique parade path, which requires you to walk twice around Florence. It's, and it's like the snake eating its own tail, but it's, it's well worth attending. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a great event, and, uh, and I hope that uh, you can make it, and I hope we can represent there pretty well. So. Does it have the time on that concert? It does. It, 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 it's the step-off time. No. Nope. But usually, I think it's around 11. Is that right? Well, we'll check. I think, it, I think it, in the past it's been 11. I make it, but that's Wednesday, May 20th, 2016. But uh, Wednesday. That's when Memorial Day is. Uh, that's when this parade is. I'm sorry. It's on Monday. No, I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah, no, that's what it says here. They want us to respond by May 20th. My bad. Okay. All right. <laughs> no one show up there and wait around for us to <clears throat> go marching through the streets. At, yeah. What's your birthday? <laughs> work day. Oh, work day. Same thing. Um, any other one minute now? Uh, let's see. We we have the um, we have these resolutions next on the on the agenda, but I think that. Um, 
I was going to yeah, do the communications from the mayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, is the, the mayor is a foam core check. Thank you. Yes, it's foam core check night. Um, so I do have um, a, uh, a proclamation that I wanted to read, and I, I'm grateful to uh, Lily Lombard, the chair of the uh, Public Shade Tree Commission, for being here and for her earlier comments. And I know we have <coughs> her um, a little bit later on um, regarding a challenge grant that uh, that the Public Shade Tree Commission and the uh, Tree Warden have worked uh, diligently on uh, as part of an effort to do a tree inventory. So you'll hear more, more about that later. Um, so this is entitled Arbor Day, April 29, 2016. Whereas in, since 1872, a special day has been set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas the holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska and is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, lower our heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat uh, for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products, and whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas in the fall of 2015, the newly appointed tree warden and public shade tree commission planted 100 new public shade trees in Northampton. And whereas integrating urban forestry more significantly into sustainable planning initiatives for Northampton is essential to protecting, promoting, and expanding our city's tree canopy. Now, therefore, I, Mayor David J. Narkowitz, do hereby proclaim April 29, 2016 as Arbor Day in the city of Northampton and urge all residents to celebrate and support our precious tree canopy for the well-being of this and future generations. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and imprinted the city seal this 24th day of April 2015. So, um, uh, so that is the Arbor Day proclamation. The, um, the foam core check is actually, uh, it's an annual event I wanted to recognize and I wanted to thank um, Councillor Barge who attended the event and actually accept formally the check on behalf of the city uh, the other night. Um, this is actually from the uh, Senior Services Department and it's an annual recognition of the amount of volunteer hours that, uh, that people in our community put in at the Senior Center um, and, and for Senior Services event. Um, uh, the Northampton uh, Senior Services and Senior Center volunteers contributed uh, 11,886.38 uh, hours of volunteer time, which is a total dollar value, uh, I believe calculated against the minimum wage, of $344,705.02. And so this is sort of a, uh, a check in recognition of those volunteer hours and sort of the value of those volunteer hours. So we thank all of the many uh, volunteers, both young and old, who, uh, who help out at the Senior Center and help make that uh, such a uh, vibrant uh, community space for our, for our residents. So I wanted to acknowledge that publicly. And again, thank you, Councillor, for, um, for attending last evening. And those are my communications. Thank, thank you very much. Um, Next up, we have resolutions. This is a second reading of both these resolutions. First resolution is to adopt the capital improvement plan for FY 2017 to 20, FY 21. Uh, this was submitted to the council on March 3rd, 2016. I'll accept a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. second. Any further discussion on this resolution? No. All those in favor of the resolution, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? The resolution passes in first and second reading. Sorry. Next up, we have uh, item 16.049. This is a resolution pertaining to Bottoms Road. And this is second reading, and I'll accept a motion. Move to approve. Second. Second. So motion's made and second. Any further discussion on this item? I'm supposed to speak. No, the mics are working. They're, we're apparently um, audio broadcasting. But my, my question is, um, what's the next step? Because this is just a resolution. There's a resolution, and then what will come from, I believe, from the DPW, because this is so this is odd and circuitous, and what happened was, as I think you and I discussed, uh, the reason it came in the form of a resolution, that was with how um, Court uh, Senator Court came, but when in fact, actually, this is a result of the petition, and um, it would have to be come before us in, in an official acceptance order. of the, yeah, as an order. So, but... This, this moves it on to the next thing. 
Um, any other questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor of the resolution pertaining to Bottoms Road, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? That passes in second reading. Next up, we have a presentation. This is uh, Kitty Callahan is here <laughs> at long last, Kitty. Uh, to um, this is this is actually the council had um, resolved some time ago, and Kitty can correct me on the date, but to that we were going to um, get annual announcements about the, the status of the living wage, what qualifies as living wage in the city of Northampton, and people who were conforming, complying, and meeting the, that that high bar. Before. Okay. Um, so, as Bill mentioned, there, there's a resolution. There was a living wage re resolution that was passed in 2000 at the end of 2009. Thank you. And since then, um, based on um, the resolution, which set a living wage of $11.90 an hour, um, it requires that there be an annual adjustment or a change based on um, changes in the consumer price index. Um, so last year's, um, last year, based on um, the consumer price index for 2015, um, we set for two we set a, a living wage of, um, for 2014, we set a living wage for 2015 of $13.18 an hour. Um, so for the first time this year, it, um, we are not, we are proposing not to change that level because so because energy cr costs went down so much that the um, consumer price index only went up by one tenth of a percent and so when we calculated what that would mean it was one penny and so what we're going to do for 2016 is defer that one penny until the next year so for, for 2016 it's going to be um, Thirteen dollars and eighteen cents an hour, um, and you know, basically, gas went down by nineteen point seven percent. Fuel oil went down by thirty one point four percent. Significant. There were some significant costs that went up. By, um, rent went up by three point seven percent, and medical care went up by two point six percent. But when you averaged all that, you only ended up with one tenth of, of a percent. And so for, for, I'm announcing that for 2016, we're going to keep it at $13.18 an hour. Next year, whatever the rate is, we'll, we'll add a penny to it. <laughs> thank that, you very much. Thank you very much, Kitty. Next up is the consent agenda. And I'm going to request that the uh, first uh, one item be, withdrawn, uh, be pulled out of it, and that's for feeding tube records. Um, Otherwise, does anyone else have any? Okay. So, uh, minus feeding tube records, all uh, I'll uh, move to uh, approve motion. the consent and, agenda. And is there a second? Second. Any discussion? No, no discussion because we I got to get used to this consent agenda. No <laughs> discussion. I do need to read it. That's correct. I'm sorry. So what's in the consent agenda is the minutes of the city council meeting April 7th, 2016. Uh, it's also the approval of annual petition for secondhand dealer licenses. And as I said, feeding tube records on 221 Pine Street, Florence, which will be pulled out. Snail trail groundings. Uh, this is 2015 and 2016 renewals with business address of 7 Main Street, Florence. Raza's place with a business address of 6 Bridge Street. Jack Spire Antiques with a business address of 416 North Main Street, Leeds. Cancer Connection with a business address of 375 South Street. Norman E. Menard with a business address of 25 Garfield Avenue. The Vintage Cellar with a business address of 11 Bridge Street, Basement. Kids Stuff with a business address of 90 Maple Street in Florence. Antiques Corner with a business address of 5 Market Street. Urban Exchange with a business address of 233 Main Street. Stuart F. Solomon Antiques with a business address of 28 North Maple Street in Florence. The Family Jewels with a business address of 56 Green Street. Also included is the approval of the annual petition for junk dealer licenses. Again, Norman E. Menard uh, with a business address of 26 Garfield Street. Richard and Sharon Huntley with a business address of 254 East Hampton Road. Also included is the approval of the annual petition for pool tables. 
um, and that's Packard's 14 Masonic Street week, weekday and Sunday licenses, and then approval of the annual petition for taxi cab licenses. <clears throat> Mercedes Cab Company Incorporation, uh, Incorporate Inc., uh, doing business as Funky Cab with a business address at 376 East Hampton Road, one petition. Uh, Cosmic Cab with a business address of 78 Con Street, five petitions. And then the approval of the annual petition for trucks, Bill Willard Incorporated with a business address of 1010 Ryan Road in Florence. Move to approve the consent, the consent agenda. So the motion has been made already in, in the second. All those in favor of approving <coughs> the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Now on feeding tube records, I have a possible conflict, so that's why I asked to remove it. So I'll be abstaining. So I'll accept the motion. For that call. So moved. Uh, motions made and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? One abstention. Okay. Now we recess uh, for Finance Committee, and uh, in the absence of Council Murphy, the Vice Chair is uh, Mr. Jesse Adams, and he will be Roll call, please. Number three. Sorry. It's all a mustard, that's it. Present. Councilor Labarge. Present. Thank you. Is there a mo uh, motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting? Move to approve. Second. Is there any discussion on this matter? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, next is the quarterly financial report of the general fund and enterprise funds. December. Um, so this uh, encompasses all the way back to July through the end of March. So it's a uh, three quarters of the way through the fiscal year. I've given you uh, the revenues and the expenditures for both the general fund and the enterprise fund, and I'm just going to highlight a few things. In general, everything is going along um, just as planned. There are basically uh, no, no surprises. There's no negatives. In fact, there's quite a few positives. On the first page is the general fund revenues. And if you look at the first section, which says taxes and excise, I'd like to call attention to the hotel motel tax and the meals tax. The first three quarters of the current fiscal year compared with the first three quarters of last fiscal year for the meals tax shows we're $58,000 ahead of where we were the, the same time last year, which is about a 12% increase. And for the hotel motel tax, the first three quarters were $81,000 ahead of where we were in the first three quarters of last fiscal year, which is an 18% increase. So that's, um, that's encouraging. And then in terms of parking revenue, which is in the next section on this report, um, parking revenues are also up. And when I talk about parking revenues, I'm including um, parking garage revenue, parking lots, parking meters on the streets, and parking passes. And among those uh, different categories, parking uh, receipts are up $104,000 over this time last year. So that's, um, that's encouraging. Councilor uh, um, Those revenue increases are, are not a result of increased rates. We haven't, we're not right. charging more restaurant tax. We're not charging higher hotel tax Correct. or parking, right? Right. No, those are those are simply volume increases. More people. More people work. 
spending more or staying longer in the parking garage. Good to know. So that's one of the highlights <coughs> in the revenues. Um, and other than that, the rest of our revenue picture for the general fund, if you go through here, is, is basically great. Um, on the third page, if you look at building permits, the other thing I want to highlight, um, in the middle of the page, on the third page, it says permits, building inspector. It's midway down. And uh, so far this year, we've brought in $252,000 in building permits. This time last year, we had brought in 194000 So we're up 30%, $57,000 in building permits. So those are the kind of indicators um, that I look for, because the rest of our revenue stream is fairly uh, predictable. Um, you know, property taxes are what they are. Um, state aid, we usually know right at the beginning of the year. So on the revenue side, there's just a few that I'm constantly watching because they can fluctuate given, you know, economic circumstances. But so far this year, everything's looking uh, really good. Um, this time last year, we had 73% of our revenues collected by this time, and that's the same this year, 73%. On the expenditure shot side, which is the next little packet in there, um, the general fund, I've given you all of the city departments minus the schools. Uh, the schools uh, watch their own budget, um, although we do look at where they are, but they're, they're in charge of that. So there's really nothing to highlight here. Everybody's payroll lines are about where they should be at 70%. But I will draw your attention to one really nice thing is on page five. If you look at snow and ice. <laughs> We've spent... 364409 we still have money left, which is unusual. And at this time last year, we had spent 881000 So we had spent half a million more by this quarter last year. So one thing that's really positive for us this year is that we have not had to dip into, we will not have to at the end of the year dip into free cash. And you haven't even had to do an order to, um, you know, deficit spend um, in snow and ice. So that's encouraging. It just leaves more money for capital projects down the road. So. And in terms of the enterprise funds, there's really not a lot to talk about there. All of their revenues are on track. All four enterprise funds have collected about 70 to 80% of their revenues. And all of their expenditures are on track um, for the year. So it's really not a lot of um, what we like. We don't want exciting. <laughs> we want revenues up, but other than that, we like things to stay just as we kind of predicted them. Are there any questions for <coughs> Council Um Yes, when, when, when you're talking about increases relative to last year, hotel, motel, meals, and parking, do, do you have those on a percentage basis over a year ago? Uh, that was the percentage I gave. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, no, um, Meals. So meal, meals tax is up 58632000 which is a 12% increase. And hotel motel is up 81832 and that's an 18% increase. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Finance Director Wright? Thank you. I don't believe this requires any, any uh, action. Um, financial orders. We'll move <coughs> financial order authorizing the payment of two previous year bills from the DPW. Upon the recommendation of the mayor, in order to authorize payment of two prior year bills from the DPW, order that the council authorize payment of two prior fiscal year, fiscal year bills from the DPW for $582.38 and $308.60, respectively. Mayor, would you like to present? Yeah, again, this is a state law rule that if we do have to pay a bill that occurred prior fiscal year, we have to have the council vote on it. Um, so these are two bills, you know, out of the 30,000 plus uh, bill uh, warrants that we process that were uh, that were not uh, processed in a timely manner. So we need to make sure that they get settled. And we just need the council to vote. Uh, the National Law to allow us to do that. What, was it, what, were, the, what were they for? Um, let's see. The, we actually have attached a copy of the invoices, I'm pretty sure. Um, one is for some truck and trailer parts um, uh, from a company called Fleet Pride. Um, and then the second one was um, 
from a company called uh, National, and it is uh, a white unit, double lock, half screen, aluminum, clear foam wrap, uh, three sides. Um, I believe it may have been some kind of construction material. I think it may have been a door, uh, probably a replacement door. Did the, bill, did the bills just get to us late or something? Uh, do you want to speak to that? Uh, they're both bills from the DPW, and they're probably bills that just got lost in the shop. Thank you. Um, and the vendor is, you know. Resubmitted them. Resubmitted. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Are there any questions for the mayor on this matter? Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Uh, the motion I put on this one. I just moved. I just moved the question. I had to present and just moved the question. Neither, n nobody had moved it, but he presented. Yeah. Do you want a motion to put on the floor before I, okay. <laughs> motion to put on the floor. Uh, so moved. Second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Now is there a motion to send it forward with a positive recommendation? So moved. So moved. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. to financial order regarding gift donation of $10,000 for improvements to city council chambers. Upon the recommendation of the, of the mayor in order, which is a gift donation of $10,000 for improvements to city council chambers. Order that the Northampton City Council gracefully accepts, excuse me, gratefully accepts the donation of $10,000, a gift to the city of Northampton from D.A. Sullivan and Sons, Inc., and in accordance with the Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, approves using the gifted funds as requested by the donor for improvements to council chambers. Move to put yeah. it on the floor. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All clear? Oh, yeah. I, was, I couldn't hear. I'm sorry. The echo, there's like an echo. Um, so um, obviously, uh, DA Sullivan uh, contacted us about wanting to make this gift. Um, we were uh, we spoke with the council president about it. Um, Mark Sullivan has been a longtime planning board member um, and knows what great shape the uh, the desks are in <coughs> council chambers. Um, so we decided that um, he was happy with us directing it to um, making some improvements here in council chambers. So I know Mr. Pomerantz has been working with the council president on, on that. We can accept the gift, but and we're asking. Uh, we're asking for not only permission to accept it, but also, more importantly, under the law, the, the ability to spend it. So that's what you're also approving, is the ability to spend it on a certain item. So, um, and the council president can maybe speak to um, to what you're um, These desks are over 90 years old, and the proof is, <clears throat> you'll see autographs inside the drawers dating back to 1924, <clears throat> which I actually think my preference would be the historical society to at least photograph and document these. The, the bad handwriting through the generations that uh, went into these doors. But it's these, this version of various versions of this in various different rooms. The rooms changed, but the desks never did, and nor the chairs. And as the counselors know, um, we all take our lives into our hands and we lean back in these chairs, they pop apart and stuff like that. Um, and so they're. Uh, Dave Pomerantz has commissioned um, through Andy's Furniture, an Amish furniture building company that's actually going to customize something out of, off their rack that will be a similar configuration with a laminate top. So yeah, your experience won't be all that much different, but the, the appearance and the, the integrity of the desk will hopefully be around for another 90 years. Um, <laughs> right, but I, 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 um, so is it is it just for desks and chairs and stuff? That's or? it. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Uh, Ten thousand dollars as That's generous right. as it is doesn't go that far. And um, yeah, just I think it's uh, your request to hopefully either take pictures or you know maybe even keep some of the some yeah. of the history because you know like people from like. Fiker to Jim Dostal and everybody in between right. have signed some of these desks. It's, ki it's kind of interesting. Calvin Coolidge signed one. It's pretty interesting. So that definitely has to go. Oh, for, I, I think, and personally, uh, I hope these don't go the way of standard surplus. Um, but at least preserving one for some historic value. If only for us. <laughs> Sitting it wistfully in the historic Northampton and remember these <laughs> fondly as counselors. But. 
there any further questions? Uh, Councilor O'Donnell. Um, I'm just wondering, I mean, DA Sullivan, you know, doing construction, d design, and stuff like that, I mean, how often do they come to the city and ask for something that we give them, a uh, building permit or something like that? You know, I, I don't know that you would know that information, but I kind of pose it rhetorically. Um, well, I'm sure they apply for building permits all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're working on the, um, yeah. but they go to the building commissioner. Yeah, no, I understand. Uh, you know, they're working on the Arts Trust building, for mm -hmm. example. Um, so, yeah, most certainly. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, Mark has to recuse himself if there's mm -hmm. any issue with his firm. Mm -hmm. um, so, they, I mean, they made this gift as an open-ended gift to, for whatever we wanted to oh, use it on. And we, we actually, I, originally I thought maybe they could do the work themselves, just make it an in-kind gift, but they right. didn't want any part of that. They just okay. wanted to make a donation, so. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's something I might support on second reading. I kind of have to think about it because I'm just curious about the intersection of a gift from a company that does business in the city. And I know the intentions are totally pure, but yeah. I'll, I may support it in the second reading, but I think all this time I, I won't. It's a good question. Are they seeking any sort of recognition? Not at all. Okay. No, they were very, very quiet about it. I just think they wanted to, you know, this, obviously the Sullivan family is very civic minded and, um, you know, uh, the DA Sullivan building is <coughs> an iconic structure in our, in our city. So, um, yeah, so I think they were just looking to make a donation. Um, and obviously the council doesn't vote on uh, building permits or, or any of those kinds of things. So. Yeah, just to just to clarify, I, yeah. I appreciate the spirit with yeah. which it's given yeah. totally, and it's this is completely, um, I guess, an, an internal question that Got I it. have. But Got it. Yeah. I'll express with others my appreciation to DA Sullivan for the gesture. So, okay. thank you. Um, we send it with a positive recommendation to the. I second that. Is there any further discussion? And I can ask the you know we can ask the city solicitor to opine sure. on that question if you'd like. It's right there. <laughs> it's certainly being made very transparently. Absolutely. So it's not yeah. like it's being. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Actually, and the city solicitor is here, by the way. Yeah, so I know. I so. Mr. Solicitor, would you like to speak to the question, or would you like some? I know you probably weren't expecting it, I'm sure, so maybe you don't. I don't know. So it's up to you. This is why city solicitors don't show up for a city council meeting. <laughs> I don't really know what the question oh. is, because I walked in <laughs> in the middle of oh, the it discussion. Was, it was about a gift from D.A. Sullivan, uh, $10,000. Oh, I was DA Sullivan to the city and uh, uh, restricted gift and we're using it to do some work on the city we're asking for authorization to do some work on the city council chambers um, but it's a ten thousand dollar unrestricted gift that we're going to direct to the city council chambers and the question is does it raise a conflict because DA Sullivan might do business before the city? it might be a good just a good to follow up with Councilor Donaldson make sure there are no pending requests by them at a minimum currently before the city possibly um, yeah, I would need to possibly. know exactly and, uh, who does what with DA Sullivan in the city? I know that one of its principals serves on the planning board. Um, uh, obviously, DA Sullivan um, is not, as I understand, receiving anything in exchange for this. It's a gift, and um, I don't see any conflicts. Um, obviously, anyone who has an interest in DA Sullivan would have to recuse him or herself anyway in anything that comes before the city that involves DA Sullivan. Um, it's not, um, yeah. Just to, just to clarify, with the goal of closing the conversation as opposed to expanding it, I don't doubt that this is totally uh, within the bounds of the law, absolutely. So it's more of an appearance thing for me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Is there any further discussion? Thank you, Mr. Solicitor. Um, yes, you did. Well, well, you moved it a several we, we times. We seconded, seconded it. Oh, you moved it? We did. Okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll now move to uh, <laughs> Financial Order C, which is Financial order to appropriate $46,798 from free cash to match funds for the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation, Urban Forestry. Upon the recommendation of the mayor to appropriate $46,798 from free cash to match funds for the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation, Urban Forestry Challenge Grant for Northampton. Whereas the city of Northampton wishes to integrate urban forestry into its sustainable planning initiatives, by recognizing the role that public shade trees play in reducing energy use, improving open air quality, mitigating stormwater, spawning retail activity, and enhancing quality of life, whereas the mayor created a new public shade tree commission and appointed a tree warden to advance this important objective and increased the city's tree planting budget to support their work, 
whereas a critical next step in their work plan is the creation of a comprehensive public shade tree inventory which can be used to guide replanting efforts, develop an urban forestry management plan, and inform future policy recommendations. Whereas the city has been awarded a grant from the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation, which will provide $30,000 towards this effort. Whereas the city must provide matching funds for the project, which will be used to complete a professional and systematic inventory of approximately 8,000 shade trees and 1,000 planting sites in our public rights of way. Therefore, be ordered <clears throat> that $46,798 be appropriated from the FY16 general fund undesignated fund balance, free cash, for the purpose of providing matching funds for the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation Urban Forestry Challenge Grant for Northampton. Move to approve. May second it. Uh, I think the, um, you know, the, the order is kind of self-explanatory. Uh, we were one of a, only a handful of communities that were selected in this round uh, to receive this challenge grant. And, um, and we are, uh, this just requires the city to put up the, uh, the matching funds. Yep. something that the tree commission has uh, been working on and um, you may remember some of you may remember the former tree committee many many years ago had attempted to do this um, and had gotten some CPA funds to try to but it ended up the project never moved forward and the funds were never spent in return but um, it is something that um, is a key part of us trying to strategically figure out where we need to um, where best to direct the resources of tree planting. So um, it, I know the tree commission's excited about it. I know the the um, uh, tree warden's excited about it. So uh, we're, we're happy about the grant and hope you'll support um, providing the matching funds. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Mayor? No. Is there a motion? I'll move to send Second this up. forward Is with a positive questions? recommendation. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. Aye. unanimous. Under new business, I'll announce that there will be a committee meeting on finance um, April 26th at 5 here in these chambers. Uh, the committee will hear the preliminary report from the 2015 year-end audit conducted by Scanlon and Associates. Is there any other new business from any committee member? No. Nope. Motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And we move out of recess and back into the regular meeting where we revisit some of those orders you just heard. So. Uh, first up, we have item 16.051. It's the financial order authorizing the payment of two previous year bills from the DPW. First reading. Move to approve. Second. <coughs> Motion is made and seconded. Any further discussion on this item? Roll call, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's all right. The wind's blowing. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. <coughs> Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Um, next item is 16.052. This is ah, just getting bounced off the internet. Of <clears throat> the financial order regarding a gift donation of ten thousand dollars for improvement to the city council chambers. The first reading. Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion on this? Yes, I, I councillor, I want to thank um, the D. A. Sullivan Sons Inc. for donating the ten thousand dollars. I I just think this is really great for them to donate this, and I think. The way the decision has been made to put in new desks and so forth, and also the historical part of inside these desks with the drawers is a great idea. Well, it's, they, they, um, their civic pride actually is reflected in their civic space, and I, and I'm, I also am grateful for their, their generous contribution in this regard. And I think, oh. and with no expectation of any type of acknowledgement beyond our gratitude. Uh, likewise, I want to express gratitude <clears throat> to D.A. Sullivan. They're a, a, a longstanding uh, general contractor in this city and have been doing work in the city for generations, it seems. And um, 
I think that it will be, if there's a way that we can, I mean, I know it's open-ended, but if there are a way somehow to recognize the gift um, with something other than just the existence of the desks and chairs, I don't know whether that would be a, some, some way our, maybe one desk could just say, that just uh, somehow acknowledge the gift, I would appreciate that. Of course, Mark will have the distinct pleasure of sitting in a comfortable chair. And yeah. I, I take your point. I think that's yeah. a that's a yeah. good recommendation. Councilor, I disagree. I mean, I, I think if they're donating, I just think if we put a plaque, then 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 it's is it certainly a gift? It's certainly generous, but then they have their name forever memorialized on these public desks, and it's an advertisement as well. So I just that's, that's my any other discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. <coughs> yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. No. Councilor Sherry. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Uh, motion carries in the first reading. And we'll have a second reading at our next meeting, first meeting in May. Uh, the item 16.053 is next to the financial order to appropriate. $46,798 from free cash. And we're going to do something about this Wi Fi um, to match funds for the Massachusetts Department of Conservation, Recreation, and Urban Forest. <coughs> this is the first reading. I'll set the approve. <coughs> Seconds made. Seconded. Further discussion? Council Klein. I just want to say I think this is an incredible use of city funds. Um, Two years ago, I took part in the informal kind of citizen uh, tree inventory that uh, Lily Lombard initiated. And it's time for us to really do a kind of evidence-based, scientific um, public shade tree inventory. And this grant will allow us to do that. Um, it's a really important thing. And I think that we, we've really showed our commitment in the city to um, increasing our urban shade trees and um, our urban forest, I guess, is the way that um, <coughs> Lily has taught me to, to call it. Um, we've quadrupled the trees that we've planted, the funding for the trees that we've planted in the city over the last year. We appointed a, a certified tree warden. We restructured um, the city's commission, tree commission. And this is another kind of step to really increasing and enhancing and diversifying our, our public shade trees. So I think this is a really, um, really worthy use of our funds. Any other comments, Councilor Bidwell? Uh, I would like to join in uh, commending the, the, the mayor and the administration for the dramatic uh, improvements <coughs> and attention to our urban trees in, in, in recent years. Right. I also have to say that I'm glad this comes on the heels of, of the ordinance that this council passed because, you know, the, the administration is obviously doing all they can for, for this important issue, and, and I think the council is too. Any other discussion or comments? That's it. Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Mr. Bidwell? Yes. Yes. Okay. And now to the marquee item 16.030. Financial order to establish water and sewer rates for FY 2017. This is the second reading. I'll accept the motion for on the floor. Move approval. Move to approve. Motion is made and seconded. Discussion. And, uh, and actually, we've got everybody here. So. Um, everyone is just to start off the solicitors recognized the mayor's recognized Susan Wright's recognized uh, Councilor Adams I have um, some points I'd like to make I have no questions just some points um, you know again I, I, I think there's no doubt that we need to uh, the North End ha Northampton has critical water and infrastructure needs that we have to pay for um, but we can do that through the current structure as well as the new structure, and I think the current structure is more fair. I think the proposal will make it more unaffordable for renters to live here and for businesses to succeed. Um, we should raise all needed revenues under the current structure. This will impact affordability less. Um, 
One of the goals is to create greater equity. Um, there is no evidence that it will do that. I requested information based on how this will impact the various users, including um, residential, commercial, city of Northampton, and tax exempt. I was told that information is not available and troublingly that there is no evaluative value to my request. Calling my request irrelevant made me concerned that perhaps others don't share how valuable it would be to know all the impacts before we post this thing. Um, so um, I think we could have done more about the impacts and I don't, I, don't, I don't think the council shares that with me, but we'll see. Um, on the note of creating greater equity, it certainly won't create more equity for renters and businesses. Uh, re revenue stav stav uh, stab stability is another goal, but as the report points out, and I quote, the city's existing rate structure generates sufficient revenues to adequately provide for current fiscal sufficiency. That means we don't need to change our rate structures in order to fund our infrastructure. We can do it under the current structure, and it's just a matter of what the council thinks is more fair. Uh, the goal of water conservation is important, but... Uh, as the DPW acting director said before us, with this proposal, there will be no increase in water conservation, and that's a tribute to the citizens of Northampton, because they all, because the citizens of Northampton can serve so well as is. Um, this process was awful. Um, I was one of the people who appreciated that the rates were frozen last year, so the taxpayers could catch up. Um, at the time, changing the entire structure wasn't on the table, and I never dreamed at that point that this unfair proposal would be the response. Uh, the money for the con consultants was not in the budget. Uh, we, didn't he we didn't meet over the course of a year, as one gentleman thought in, in a public comment. He's mistaken. That did not happen. Um, the money, which was not in the budget and not subject to council approval, um, was used to hire these, uh, the consultants. Um, the mayor met with them from April until January. The council had no part in that. The public had no part in that. And again, this, this is... Um, this is a, that, that, that's what makes it an awful process. I hope it's not duplicated in the future. I hope the council is not treated as an afterthought and um, circumvented until later. I understand later in the game there was process, but if we knew about this back in August, we might have had a, we might have had a, a different sort of process leading all the way through it. But um, I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm not opposing this because uh, of the process, even though the process was substandard. It's, I'm opposing it because it's not in the best interest of Northampton, and I strongly oppose it. Thank you. Any other comments? <clears throat> Council LaBarge. Yes. Um, I want to thank the mayor um, for setting up the meeting with the Chamber of Commerce. I think it was a great meeting. I received calls after that hearing from some of the business people and some of the residents in the city and on my ward who thought that the mayor really did a great presentation. And I have to agree with that. I mean, there was some hefty debates going on and so forth like that, but that's part of debating. I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce. I want to thank the Department of Public Works their staff. I want to thank the mayor and his staff and Susan Wright and also Len Simmons for a great job of helping and putting this presentation in place. If I recall at this last meeting that the mayor had four goals for a new system to promote conservation, help people who are economically disadvantaged, and also to improve equity among different types of customers. And he also postponed the fire service line fee until the year of 2018. I heard more of that than about the water and the sewer increase. And I have to say, the mayor listened. It's proven facts. When we have open public hearings, just like we did a year ago, I brought in as many people I could, and I only had one day to call people to tell them to come to that hearing on the water and sewer rights. The mayor did listen. He did listen this time. I think he was well-organized 
and I am going to support this 100%. I have people who actually called me from other wards, and I called the mayor's office because I knew these people who had five families, six families, seven families, apartments, and I have to say, I have to thank Lynn again, thank Susan and the mayor for helping them along, for understanding what the difference would be, and it didn't turn out to be like they thought it was going to be. So thank you for that also. So I am supporting this 100%. Uh, point of information, I just um, Suzanne Beck uh, mentioned the fire suppression system um, fixed utility fee, which we're not voting on, just so everyone understands. We're voting on the volumetrics. I understand so, that. No, it wasn't, this is just also for, for the public at large. We're voting on the, the volumetrics and not on now the mayor that's the mayor's prerogative to withdraw or suspend that fee and uh, as it is the mayor's prerogative to offer changes and alterations to the proposal but the only thing we're voting on is volume metrics just so that right just but so I, clear. I also would like to get this clear counselor because you were not there that night that was a big issue that was no, brought up that even though we're not voting on it he did listen yep nope good point <clears throat> Councilor Bidwell uh, that, 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 that is an important point, and, and the, the, the mayor's um, decision to, to delay implementation of that, of that fee for a year is, is part of my reasoning in, in supporting this measure. Um, I was a, a very enthusiastic supporter from the start of the, of, the, of the new tiered methodology, which I think does fairly and appropriately uh, shift some of the burden of payment to the larger volume users and to those users who uh, rely upon and uh, and use to a greater extent our incredibly expensive uh, infrastructure. However, when we learned of some of the uh, impacts on some of the large volume users, uh, nonprofit and 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 manufacturing and other businesses, I think it was quite appropriate for us to call a pause in the action and to take some time to learn more about it, to ask the mayor to meet with the business community and others affected and, 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 and listen. And I must say, he did what we asked him to do. Um, arranged a forum where there was a, a, a spirited debate, I think is safe to say. Um, and coming out of that, uh, did a lot of mulling and, and made a, a, a second adjustment. The first adjustment he made was to the volumetric rates. Um, the second, though we're not voting on it, uh, is an important part of the package, and I think that was a very appropriate uh, uh, adjustment. As the consultant to the process pointed out, this is not perfect. Right. There are so many uh, objectives that, that this, as this uh, addresses, as it should, uh, there are some of them going to be in conflict with one another, and there is no perfect solution. And I, too, wish there were a better solution to the, uh, the, the, the multi-tenant issue. Um, uh, but I acknowledge that it can't be perfect, and that's one of the things that, uh, that, 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 is, that is imperfect. I, too, uh, might have appreciated a little earlier involvement, but as of January, it's been a very transparent process. The, the, the mayor's been open to feedback and suggestions. Um, so on balance, um, uh, I'm supporting this. Council Chair. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a reason this isn't one of the perennial conversations that we have, and that's because this is a new responsibility for us. And it's only the second time that we've had a public conversation about this. Previously, the rates were, as we know, set by the BPW without public input. Um, last year, when this conversation was opened up to the public for the first time, it was clear how many, especially people who are elderly or on fixed or low income, um, how many of those people were really interested in being part of this conversation. And I was at that public meeting, as were a few of, of us, um, and there was some very poignant testimony there from people who felt like the impact of an increase <coughs> to a flat rate from $5.58 to $5.74 per CCF was just going to be too much for them to bear. So there was a call to freeze the rate while the situation was studied to see if there was a more equitable way to structure it. And this is where I'm sort of surprised and puzzled because this call for the moratorium was at least partly led by Councillor Adams, who said he would vote no on a flat rate increase 
though he acknowledged an increase was necessary then as he does now, um, because it was unfair to the powerless and the not wealthy. So his wish was, his wish was granted, a study was conducted, a different structure has been proposed, and that structure helps those residents. Um, but now, Councillor Adams, you're calling for a exactly the flat rate increase that you opposed last year, um, except that now, since there's been a moratorium, I imagine actually that flat rate increase might have to be larger than it was last year um, to compensate for that moratorium. So now I would find it concerning if I thought it was going to negatively impact renters in multi-unit buildings. Um, I haven't actually heard any evidence that it will, but I have heard evidence to the contrary that, um, that it will have a positive impact. I spoke to uh, a, um, a landlord who owns a 10-unit building with a three-quarter inch meter, single meter for the 10 units. And when he used the online calculator, he said the result was that he would have a small decrease in his rate. So, and I know we're only talking about volumetrics, but additionally, he would then get to spread that fixed rate over those 10 units, because it would just be one fixed rate for those 10 units. So that's something that a single family home doesn't get to do. Um, I, I don't see how an increased flat rate helps renters in the situation at all, because every CCF, not just those over 16 CCF, would likely be at a higher rate, because the current frozen rate is $5.58 per CCF. The proposal last year was a flat rate of $5.74. This year's proposal is $4.36 up to 16, and then $5.82 per CCF after that. So it's only eight cents more per CCF, again, over 16, than last year's proposed flat rate, which may very well have to be higher. And since now, if we talk about businesses with larger volume, the proposed rate for users with meters larger than an inch is $5.72 per CCF. That is two cents lower than the proposed flat rate last year. So I, I think there's generally agreement this is a more open and transparent process. And it's been good and needed. Maybe there's not total agreement, but it's, it's good that we at least have a public process. Um, but you know we are now responsible, and we need to own this responsibility, as Mr. Ford said. Um, so I, I think that these volumetric rates address a concern that we saw last year, and that they are, in fact, much more equitable and fair. Councilor, actually, is there anyone? Well, Councilor Adams wants to respond. address, you want to respond. Councilor Shiera, um, you've mischaracterized what I said last year. Last year, I said that the mayor, I was happy when the mayor froze the rates. Taxpayers spoke out and said they needed to catch up, and the mayor froze the rates. At no point have I ever said that we should change the structure. So the mayor froze the rates for a year. I said that was a good idea, but to make that into, in, but it's conflating it to suggest that I said we should change the structure. I opposed the change in structure. I have never opposed the flat rate structure. Again, I have never opposed the flat rate structure. Thank you. I, I, I didn't, I said that there was, I'm sorry to imply that you, I didn't mean to imply that you said to, we should change the structure. There was a call to look at the structure and see if there was a more equitable way to, to handle it. And I never took part in that. I said, I'm glad he froze the structure and nothing more, anything else did never, never came from my mouth. Thank you. When you quote me, please quote me right. Councilor O'Donnell. I just have a few comments myself. Um, I think many of my colleagues have made um, some strong points that I, I would have offered, so I'll try not to repeat what's been said. Um, but I guess I have three or so points to make. And one is about um, the dialogue we're having now. I think that certainly at the last meeting, perhaps at this meeting, um, <coughs> we should remind ourselves to focus really like a laser on the matter that's at hand, which is the volumetric rates, and be wary of um, of straying beyond that. I think that's the appropriate way to, to, um, to tackle this. There are certainly larger global issues of the local economy. The city council is looking at many of them. In fact, in a committee chaired by Councilor Shara, um, which is going to begin hearing soon. Um, and I think that's very valuable. But with regards to the actual rates and the structure, I, I'll say it, I support a tiered rate. And actually, um, I didn't have a very competitive election last year, but I 
went around telling people I did in, in, uh, in principle because I thought it was fairer. Um, as Councillor Bidwell says, no system is perfect, and I think that's important to reiterate. That's not just the case here. It's a, it's a law of the universe. You can't come up with a perfect system. Last year, residents came to us and asked for help. They said, we're trying to conserve water. You know, when we want to water our plants, we bring, bring them to the shower with us. Please help us. This year, and that was a flat rate. This year, we're proposing a tiered rate, and you have, indeed, some businesses come forward and say, this might be a challenge for us. No system is perfect. Second point. We cannot debate this in terms of black and whites or absolutes. Apply that to the first point. Not every resident had a problem with this last year. And this year, not every business has a problem with it this year. And to paint it with too broad a brush is something we have to be careful about. Because in doing so, we lose the nuance and the discussion and the attention to detail that the public expects from us. And I think, by and large, I would like to thank the council for doing just that. Um, I think there has been some thoughtful debate on both sides, and uh, I, I would actually extend my appreciation to Councillor Adams as well as um, councillors who may have a different uh, opinion on this, because it's our job to look at this thoughtfully. As Councillor Shara said, this is one of the first times we're actually looking at this, and it's our responsibility to get it right. That doesn't just mean the outcome, it means the process, our process, the way of um, deliberating about that. Now, I want to just rebut two points, because the only way to actually debate this is to compare the current system versus the proposal. And as we just, I think we can all agree, neither one is perfect. I mean, I've actually made a criticism of, of the, the process in a sense, a kind of a light criticism, but I'll repeat it just so you, just so you know I, I, I too can have criticisms, and that is we are voting on the volumetric rate, but not fixed costs or other elements of the bill. I think that should change next year. But nonetheless, as others have said, we have a responsibility this year. So what are the elements in the current proposal versus the current system versus the proposed system we should weigh? One of them is, what's the effect on 5% of the largest users in the city? And here's again where I think we have to be cautious about painting with too broad a brush. It's true that you have some large companies like Coca-Cola who are going to pay $77,000 more a quarter. Of course, they use a quarter of the water in the city. Uh, Packaging Corporation of America, 1,500 more a month, and so on. But let's look at some of the other figures. Joe's and Ward 3, $27. I think Sylvester's is 26. Spoleto, $26. A quarter. Cooper's Corner, 18. It is just not true that every business will be devastated by this. It's just not true. And I understand that some can still feel it's on balance, not the right way to go, but it's not fair to, to say it's absolutely one way or another. Um, as Council Chair points out, there is a calculator that you should go to to plug in your actual numbers because that's, it's, it's complicated. And I realize I've talked for a long time, so let me, let me wrap up. I don't think this is universally um, bad at all. I think it's on balance a, a good improvement. Let's talk about the 95% of the users, most of whom are residents of the city. What would a flat rate, return to a flat rate do for them? It would, in fact, if you want to raise the same amount of revenue, which we should do as part of uh, responsible governance to tend to our infrastructure, it would drive up the bill for those people. If you want to bring it down for 5%, you're going to bring it up for 95%. And I don't think that's fair. As I said before, I have a hard time explaining to a senior citizen on a fixed income who conserves water why she should pay the same rate as Coca-Cola. And I know not every business is Coca-Cola. I'm not trying to paint with too broad a brush either. But I think it's important to realize the nuance here and to do this weighing. If you do this weighing, you'll see that it is better on balance. It's an improvement over the current system. Just briefly <coughs> on renters. There's this myth that somehow renters are being penalized because if you have multiple units in one building with one meter, there's this idea that they are going to suddenly be paying over what they pay now. That's not true. The very worst that could happen is, you know, look at the current rate for water, 558. The proposal, if they don't meet the conservation cutoff, is 582. It's an increase, but it's nowhere near the increase as Northampton has had in the past, which we can all agree 
are largely a result of deferred maintenance and lack of political will in many cases to do what we had to do. In this case, we are doing what we have to do and we're establishing more equity. So that baseline stays the same. And it's only when you have people go below the conservation cutoff that you get a credit. There's no penalty, there's a credit. So I think that's important to point out. Again, if you support a flat rate, in my opinion, and again, I totally respect the differences of opinion on this, and it's been a thoughtful process, and it's okay to have this debate. But in my opinion, a flat rate um, harm is not a progressive solution, and it harms the 95% of the users of the city who are residents, many of whom are low income. So that's why I support um, the proposal before us. Thank you. Councilor Carr. <coughs> Thank you. Um, well, first of all, I do want to reiterate some things that I said uh, at the last meeting, which is um, to appreciate all of the work that went into developing this proposal. We were at, I mean, we asked the mayor a year ago when he did freeze this to really take a careful look, and I think it was a good use of the funds to um, analyze the situation with the consultants that we did. And so in, in reading and studying all of this, uh, I've had to think about why really look at the reasoning under the underpinnings for why the tiered system is a fairer system um, and one of the one of the largest ones was something that was uh, was reminded of from we one of the communications from a constituent is really look at the fact that the true cost of the large users is a higher cost than the than the cost of the small users and so what the tiered system does is it actually takes that into consideration. And so then um, small users are uh, credited, as Councillor O'Donnell pointed out, for con conserving in the way they do. And large users, I'm not going to say we are penalized, but uh, large users do make up for the fact that they have such a, uh, a much larger impact on the system and, uh, and, and are the reason that we're required to have, as, um, as uh, state of the art and as, I mean, that we really need to have a heavy duty infrastructure to accommodate some, something like Coca-Cola um, bottling plant. Um, it's great that we have Coca-Cola in Northampton. It's great that we have the jobs and we have the work, but it, they do use 25% of the water and they, I'm not going to go so far as to say that they have 25% of the impact on the infrastructure on the system, but they certainly ha um, do have a higher effect on our infrastructure system than, than do the small users. And so that basic underpinning was what, you know, really is the clincher for me for why this is ultimately a fairer system and one that... Um, as I look at the at businesses too, as was pointed out, the the uh, the difference that they would pay, the eighteen dollars, the twenty four dollars, you know, for Joe's and for Sylvester's and places are it seem extremely reasonable, considering the amount of infrastructure work that we're going to need over the next five years. So I, again, um, I appreciate all the work and the analysis that went into it. It was very well thought out, and and um, and I think that we will be better off. I know we will be better off in the end. Thanks. Councilor Klein, did you? No? Um, the, the, of course, the thrust of the conversation recently has been on the issue of equity. <clears throat> and one of the more salient points, of course, is that 5% of the water consumed in Northampton, 5% uh, I mean, I'm sorry, 53% of the water consumed in Northampton is done by 5% of the largest users. 53% of our water. Now, arguably, you can say that our system has to be twice as big if those, if those people didn't consume that water. Which, you know, taken on the face of it means that we're subsidizing, we have subsidized historically with a flat rate, all citizens and small users have been subsidizing a more robust system to accommodate 5% of the businesses that we value and cherish. At the same time, it's not inappropriate, it, I think now, to say that we've carried, we've carried a burden there. We've picked up the tab. That's the nature of a flat tax or a flat rate or a flat fee. Um, uh, Patrick Bowen. 
uh, wrote a letter and actually compared it, I think, as uh, he made an analogy of comparing it to a, a gas tax. A motorcycle, of course, has a much, you know, is paying the same tax, the rate of tax, on gasoline, despite their much smaller footprint on the infrastructure, whereas a large truck, which will pay more in volume but does not, but pays the same rate, has a disproportionately larger impact on the infrastructure. Same holds with larger <coughs> consumers and larger users. We've had to retrofit. And that's the issue about the, the firefighting, uh, the, the fire suppression system fee, I suppose. But it, all, it, it seems, I mean, I, I, that's, that's where, I mean, it's where I break on this. I think actually, by and large, the, we pay a single payer tax rate. Uh, my, my tax rate's the same as Eric Shores. We, uh, and, and I believe wholeheartedly that that is an appropriate way to uh, attract and retain businesses. Water is a different issue. Water is elemental, of course, but of course, that woman that Councilor O'Donnell's talking to, she needs that water. Any additional expense in that water, she cannot pass on. These larger consumers, this 5%, has within their capacity to pass that on, particularly as a form of product. They're using our water as product. There is a way to offset that additional cost. And proportionally, the impact on them compared to the woman who's on a fixed income, who's, who's paying taxes equivalent to their mortgage, that is, this is a more equitable response. This is where equity comes in, and that's why I, I believe that this tiered system is appropriate. It's past due, and I I, I hope that in it, by the end of this vote that it will be realized and will be the rates set for the city of Northampton. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Um, I also want councilors to remember at this hearing of the business owners, and especially one of them talking about a business, okay? Was the mayor, did he own a business which had nothing to do with the fees and the tears? We are a business. We're a giant business here also in the city. It is the mayor's full responsibility and every counselor to make sure that we are able to put something in place and be able to pay the bills in this city. We have health insurance. We have many, many responsibilities. So I think the fee is the right way to go. Also, there were many people, Counselor, who were at that hearing, if you're talking a year ago, from my ward, who were pleading not to raise the fees. And that was due because of getting two stormwater utility bills because the city was late with the company that they had hired and they just could not afford to do that. But I, I, I really wanna say, this is a very large business and we have a responsibility as counselors to make sure that we have the adequate amount of money to go ahead and do our infrastructure and pay our bills. Um. <laughs> okay, I, 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 are we at the end of debate? Um, did you want to, you want to yeah, talk to um, last time we had a we had a legal issue that we were um, that we that we were seeking an answer to, and it was I was wondering whether or not this was an up or down vote, like the administrative orders, or because if so, we've had we'd, we we've already amended this. Um, and if it were only an up or down vote, then how could we legally amend it? Um, so I pose this question. Uh, in my opinion, either has to be we can amend it, which we did, and that's legal, or we cannot amend it. Yet we already did that. So I, was, I wanted the solicitor to um, weigh in on that. And a point of clarification, I thought we accepted the revision, the proposed revision of the mayor as opposed to amend it. That's what I thought. It was a re a, accepting a revision as opposed to amending. So 
put it. No, it was a motion by Councillor Carney to amend it. Okay. Yes. So, uh, uh, Solicitor Seawald, you, you have been recognized, so. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I, I think the first, the first point I'd like to make is that um, to answer the, the question that uh, Councillor Adams raised is it is an up or down, yes or no. Um, the council in and of itself on its own has no authority to amend the proposal uh, that, the, that the mayor has uh, put forth on its own. Um, just as with the administrative orders, you couldn't rewrite the administrative orders and then approve those. Uh, it's either up or down. The mayor, as I understand it, um, requested modifications in the proposed order after the first reading. Um, however, that motion was couched. This was a request of the mayor to modify or amend his order. It's not the council's order to modify or amend. Uh, and so what came before the council, however it was styled, whether it was styled as a, a, a request to amend based on the, the uh, mayor's request or to substitute, um, I think it was perfectly uh, within the, the right of this council to um, take that request from the mayor and to act on it. And um, <clears throat> so um, the council could also have refused to allow uh, the mayor to substitute or modify or amend the order that he submitted. And at that point, it would be up to the mayor to withdraw and resubmit. Mm -hmm. That's not what I understand the council did. The council acceded to the mayor's request to modify the order he submitted for your approval. And that, and um, having allowed the mayor to uh, amend or modify or substitute the order he submitted, uh, that is now before the council for an up or down yes or no vote. Councilor? Uh, it's just a point of information that Council Carney moved to yep. amend the order to reflect the revised rates introduced by the mayor. And Council Sheriff seconded. Solicitors, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I, uh, that was my question. I, I know that when we had our, our discussion, I asked at that point what was appropriate, whether it would be appropriate to accept the, uh, how, how to word it, whether it would be to accept the mayor's proposed revisions or to amend. And I think we had a little bit of discussion around that. But in, if the result is the same, I mean, the intent was to accept uh, the mayor's proposed revisions, and if that, and if we need to withdraw the amendment and reword that to be one that accepts the mayor's revisions, then <clears throat> I'm prepared to do that. I mean, I don't under. Um, would the, is there such a motion to say that we right. accept the revisions as opposed to calling an amendment? I mean, we're dealing with the semantic here, but... I, I mean, here, here's why I think right. it matters, and it doesn't have to do with semantics. The reason why is, is because I'm wondering if we have the power to amend these orders or not. So for, in the future, I want to know which we can and which we can't amend. I know that we cannot amend administrative orders, and I know that we now, Solicitor Seawald saying that we can't amend these, so I'd, I, I want to know if that's the... If that's, uh, is that the case with all financial orders? And, and that's, that's why I want clarification. Well, I'm not here to opine on all financial orders. I was requested to come and speak to a very specific well, order that the mayor asked to be revised. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's form over substance to say that a motion to substitute as a motion to amend um, it makes, it makes a difference. It makes no difference. The, the, uh, the essence of what happened was that the mayor submitted a, a proposal ask that proposal to be amended. The council is ceded to the mayor's request to amend that. And the point I was making to Councilor Adams is that that amendment could not have been made without the mayor's request. And the, the council didn't have to accede to that request. It was a request. The, the council is ceded to that request. And now, as I said, the modified order uh, proposal is before the council for a yes or no vote. Thank you. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Council O'Donnell had his hand up. I mean, just this might be a way to kind of clarify things as well. I mean, there's nothing that requires us to pass an order to approve the, um, the rates. We could do it with a resolution. In theory, if you were posted, we could just, someone could make a motion to approve the rates because it's subject to the Council approval. So I guess what I'm wondering is, is it really a question of our power 
to amend the order. That seems like it's missing the point. As long as we take an official stance, whether it's through an order, a resolution, or whatever, that mirrors what the mayor has given us, then it's equivalent to us approving it. And so it doesn't matter whether or not we've amended it. If we amended it in a way that is no, it's no longer what the mayor's proposal is, then it's just, it, wouldn't, it would not be equivalent to uh, approval. It would just be something we did, and it would have no force. However, there has to be a, a approval because these rates cannot go into effect without your approval. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, what are you approving? Are you approving the document that the mayor submitted prior to the first vote, or are you the approving second. the document that the mayor asked to, to substitute for the second vote? And, you know, again, this is form over substance as far as I'm concerned. Right. I mean, whatever the document is. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no you still just, just whatever the document is, however we do it, I mean, the, we, whether we amend it or what, we're expressing the approval of the, of the proposal the mayor has brought to us. So I think that's the essential thing, right? Yeah. That's, that's the goal. Okay. Sorry, Adam. <clears throat> Slicer Seawald, um, thank you. Your, la your answer to my last question was 100% non-responsive. What I was asking you is, and this is why it's important, is because is, is it just this type of this order, the water and sewer rates, that can only be voted up or down, or is it applied to other financial orders? And if the answer is no, fine. But I mean, I, I'd like an answer to the question. If uh, the I'm, answer is you don't know, or you, or you didn't, weren't expected to be asked that question, fine, but I'd like an answer to the question. I'm not, I'm not prepared to proceed on any other order. If there's an order you have in mind you want to submit to me, I will review it. I will review what the requirements are for approval, and I will uh, express my opinion on that. But I'm not going to express a global opinion about all other orders. This is a very specific order that was before the council. I learned at about 5.30 today that this issue had arose. And just before I called you, because I was in a meeting and I didn't see any of the texts or emails until I called you at about 5.30, 5.45. And this is the issue that was presented to me. I've expressed my opinion to you on the telephone. I've expressed my opinion to the, the council president. And I'll express my opinion again that at the request of the mayor, the council can allow a substitution amendment, a revision to the, to the uh, rate structure that he submitted. And the, the council had the authority to accept that, reject it. it ex the council accepted it. That is now before the council for a yes or no vote. And if there are other financial orders you would like an opinion on, send them through the process and I will review them and, and offer my opinion. I understand it'll, it'll change based on the, on the order. But my, what I'm really surprised about is that the council president told us last time that he texted you before the last meeting the legal right. question, and then we asked it at the council floor last time, and now you're saying today that you didn't know about the question until just early, later this afternoon? I, I responded to the, I didn't see that before the meeting two weeks ago. I did in the interim send a text to the, uh, to the council oh, so president. So you didn't know about it. Okay, thank you. Right, but I didn't know that it was still an issue tonight until about 530. I hadn't heard anything about it since I, I texted the council president. I thought the, the issue was resolved. I heard about it again at 5.30 today. And there seems to be a pattern here that I'm getting emails around 5.30 before council meeting. Well, this was brought up two weeks ago in public, so I, and, and was requested, and I requested the council president look into it. So if you're suggesting that it was too late, perhaps there should be better communication. But Well, um, yeah, is there more to extract yes. from this? Don't continue. The reason why, uh, part of the reason why I bring this up is because either we can amend it or not, and the, and, this, and the solicitor's, uh, the mayor's lawyer, his opinion is that um, we can't. Yet we can if the mayor is the requester of the um, amendment. That doesn't even make any sense at all, and I disagree with it. And that's the opinion of the mayor's lawyer, and that's my final thoughts. Thank you. Can I just add one other piece of information, if I'd be allowed? Sure, and then come through. So um, as you may recall, last year, the first year that we did this, um, at your April 2nd meeting, April 2nd, 2015, you can go back and check the agenda, I submitted an order to this council um, with a recommended increase in the rates, the volumetric rates for FY 2016. Um, it was on your agenda. And, and again, this is the first time we ever did this. So we put it into, I, we, we put it into an order form just because we thought that's how the council typically votes. I mean, you also have, uh, approve my appointments without an order. So maybe we could do it as a memo or, you know, the, the charter says appoint approval, you know, the mayor appoints subject to the approval of the council. So maybe I could have just sent you an email and said, I'd like the rates to be X and you guys could just make a motion, a voice vote motion. I mean, I don't know that it has to be on an order, but that's what we did last year. So April 2nd, I did that. 
Then the, it was referred that night to the uh, then Committee on Public uh, Works. Um, we had a hearing the following week on it. Um, and then prior to the next meeting, I sent a memo to the council um, with a revised order and said, based on the feedback that I heard at the public uh, meeting, I'd like to revise my original recommendation. Mm -hmm. And I submitted a new order for the April 16th uh, meeting um, two weeks later. And the council actually didn't even take a vote to replace the order that I can tell from the minutes. They just accepted the revised recommendation um, and voted on it unanimously. Um, and Councillor Adams actually thanked me for uh, for revising my recommendation um, and freezing the rates. Uh, so I'm just. I didn't thank you for the form. Tell you, thank you for the exact same process happened yeah. last Sorry. year. Sorry, it only works one way. It's. I was I was actually trying to. Um, I was trying to accommodate your concerns that you've expressed, and I suppose. And I, I know you would be as vigilant when I'm cut off. Thank you. I, w I will. Be, I will be, and and. Uh, um, and would you like the floor? Yes, and I never thank the mayor for the form of the of the uh, of the policy. Thank you, uh, Councilor Bidwell. You had your hand. Um, to me, it's 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 quite clear. Uh, a, a question was asked of 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 uh, council and asked and answered. As far as I'm concerned, can can the council on its own decide to amend an order that has been put forward by the mayor? No. It's up or down. Can the council uh, decide to accept an amendment to a previous order that the mayor has put forward? Yes, we can. Having amended it, then we vote up or down. Um, to me, it's quite, I'm, I'm, I'm not an attorney, and maybe it's an advantage to not be too legalistic. But as a matter of, of common sense and procedure, I'm not an attorney, but, I, but I'm accustomed to a fair amount of committee and count, uh, co organizational procedure it seems very clear to me and I would like to see us uh, move on with the vote well actually Councillor Adams can I ask you would you have a way of reconciling the clear intent of the council um, it would be very simple the mayor would just withdraw it and present it in the correct form and then we could not amend it and then no illegal amendments could occur because it would be in the form that he wants and we could vote on that <coughs> uh, what, what form would that be an unamended order that is what is what is before us in the form of an amended order. A, a revised order. A revised. Right. Uh, that the council did not amend. Right. So, but, but he, would you be comfortable if we instead, as Councilor Carney suggested, propose that we accept the revisions proposed by the mayor? Right. I mean, and it sure. Would be, exactly. It would not be in, in the form of an amendment. I mean, that, that's but fine. I really, I really want a clarification around what type of orders we can amend and what we can't. So I, and I, and I'm not, okay, well, that seems like a larger about, question for uh, right, another Right, which is time. why I asked the solicitor, and he said that it depends on the financial order. But that's why, but, I, 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 that's why I asked, yeah. So, yeah, I don't, yeah, that's fine. We can move on. I just, I want an answer to that question, because it, because some, some orders we can amend, some we can't. I understand. Um, Councilor Carter. Uh, just to say, I, I think that there was a little bit of confusion at, two weeks ago, yes. and I, what I was trying to do was accommodate the mayor's wish to present us with a revised order. And so I think there was just a question, do we, do I ask for an amendment? And I think we, it was general consensus was, yeah, we should just amend it then. But if, I mean, if for the, for, for the record, if it's helpful, I'm happy to, even though we've already amended it, I'm happy to bolster that with a recommend, with a, with a motion that we accept the mayor's revised proposal. That would be. I accept that. I'll second a, that. So, so I'll Councilor move that we accept. Okay, there's a, a, a motion made and seconded, but Councilor O'Donnell, you want to speak to that point? <laughs> no, that's okay. Thank you. Uh, any discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nay. Uh, any other nays? Any abstentions? Okay. We've now accepted the revisions. And the amendment, and we move on. Um, any other discussion on the volumetric rates for water and sewer? Actually, and I wanted to add actually one other point on the on that was um, there was also another inequity built in, and it wasn't intentional. But uh, the five percent of those consumers, many of them actually have, uh, and particularly in Coca-Cola, have 
metered effluence uh, sewer. They actually paid uh, per use, whereas every other citizen in this community paid 100% based on their water consumption. The assumption there was that 100% was outflowed and that we were paying into that and this new tiered rate offsets that and now turns into 80%. So that also figures into the reduction. It is also the issue of equity. And, and I think it, it, those are relevant points um, that somehow sometimes get obscured in, in, the, in the fog of battle, as it were. So, um, Council Barge, you have, okay. Any other discussion? Yes, I. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I wasn't sure if you were. No, I'm, I'm done. I want to thank Councilor Jesse Adams because I could see where your concerns are. So here we have Attorney Ali Seewald and you're an attorney. So you have all the rights to ask and I think you did very good with that. So thank you. Uh, okay, I've complete, well, networks completely disappeared now. Okay, all right, that's good. <laughs> this is all right. I think I got it. All right, well, all right, back to the order at hand, and hopefully, let me see if I can call it up here. Oh, that's finance, here we go. All right, so, roll call, please. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Adams. No. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. That passes in second reading and uh, <clears throat> it is done. Item E, 16.037 is financial order for FY17 capital plan, $225,000 for LED light, uh, street lights project. This is second reading. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded it. Um, discussion on this? No. Nope. Roll call, please. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Goodman. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. That passes in second reading. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, G, 16 point zero three nine. This is a financial order for 375000 Oh, sorry. Yeah, we skipped it. 16.038. Thank you, Councilor Carney. And <laughs> this is the financial order for FY17 capital plan. This is $129,210 for voiceover IP from uh, the fund 2620 INET and technology. Second reading. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and second. Any further debate or discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Now, G, 16.039 financial order for $375,000 to appropriate the new radio councils for the dispatch center. Second reading. Discuss the motion. Motion's made in second. Uh, discussion. Roll call, please. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Uh, passes in second reading. 16.040 financial order for FY17 capital plan, $1,354,013 for the wastewater treatment plan improvements. Move, Move approved. approved. Motion's made and seconded. Any further discussion on this item? This will. Uh, Allay fears of Council O'Donnell as he expressed earlier uh, last last meeting. So if if this should pass, so. and my constituents, and your constituents, uh, roll call please. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Passes in second reading. Sixteen point zero four one. The financial order to appropriate. $500,000 for street resurfacing and authorized bor uh, borrowing and issuance of bonds, et cetera. Second reading. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. And as you'll note, the mayor has posted a, a catalog of 
pavement projects for the summer that you can find, I believe, on the website and various social media outlets. Um, any other discussion? Nope. Roll call, please. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. That passes in second reading. Also in second reading is this 16.042 uh, financial order to replace the voice over IP system. Vote to approve. Motion's made. Second. Discussion? Councilor Adams? Uh, Your Honor? <coughs> Councilor Adams has a question. I was thinking about this, and if it didn't couple out, come up last time, is it is it that the entire system is, is um, equally in need of repair, or is it possible to save money, try to repair the most worn parts of it if they're not all equally worn? Which are, I'm sorry, Councilor. The voice over IP. Yeah, no, it's uh, the, 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 the most concerning part is the actual um, sort of engine, the server of the whole process, which is the piece that's beginning to have problems. Um, and then all of the other, um, uh, you know, accessory equipment is no longer supported or can be replaced. And so the problem is, you know, if that if we don't re and the, if we don't replace that server unit, then they all, all the systems go down. And we actually f have had a few cases where the system has gone down, and we've had to reboot it. Um, so you know, we've worked with a um, we've worked with the telecommunications. Uh, company to help us spec out what we need we've looked at what's on the um, you know what's on the state bid list and uh, this is what our IT director uh, recommends that we need to do. so um, it's really not it's not something that because it is an outdated system it's no longer supported by any company uh, there's no way that we can kind of mix and match a new server and use all the old um, handsets for example it's just not supported unfortunately um, and again, I just I think about you know I realize people say well you just bought it in 2007 but you know think about the phones we were talking on in 2007 versus what you know just technology is changing at such a rapid rate uh, so that's one of the issues that we're facing here is we we were early adopters of a technology that has now you know changed and the companies have spot sold each other and so that's sort of what we're up against but we're hoping that this is going to be a system that's going to that's going to um, uh, last us for a while. Any other questions, discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Passes in second reading. Next up is 16.043, the financial order for FY17 capital plan. $585,000 for a fire truck. Uh, second reading. Move to approve. Motions made and second in any discussion. Roll call, please. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Passes in second reading. Next up, L, 16.044, financial order to appropriate $275,000 from FY16 free cash to Northampton Public Schools projects at second reading. Move to approve. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? Roll call, Pam, please. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Next up, uh, 16.045, financial order to appropriate $2,860 from CPA funding to the Leeds Historic Walking Tour Project. In the second reading. Approval. Motion's made. Second. Second? Second. second. Okay. It to be a little louder. It's, it's on the wall. Um, any discussion? Council Klein. Um, I wasn't here last time to uh, endorse this project, but I've been working with the Lead Civic Association around all of the uh, the signage and, and creating kind of this ability to do a walking tour throughout Leeds, and it's an incredible project. There's such rich history there, and um, I just want to say that I think that we absolutely need to support this. I think it's a really good use of CPA funds. I think there's still a map on the other side of that board on the cork board side. Yeah. We got to see last night. Yeah. 
Any other discussion on this? Roll call, please. Yes. Councilor Obama. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. And the end of the financial order is a 16.046 of financial order authorizing the mayor to execute a lease agreement with NCTV. Second. Reading. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motions made and second. Of course, I would remind NCTV that we're not broadcasting tonight except for audio. Yeah. <laughs> but I have a feeling that's not their fault. Um, uh, so that shouldn't weigh in on this decision. So, roll call, please. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Okay, that passes in second reading, and now we come up to our singular order here, which is 16.048, and it's an ordinance to provide for limited time parking on King Street by revising Section 312-104, Schedule 3 of the City Code. So first, we accept the motion. Second. Um, since I can't call it up, uh, I would defer to the head of transportation park. Yes, I'd be happy to do that. This is an ordinance that received the positive recommendation from the Transportation Parking Commission. Um, it would create the first and only 15-minute space on King Street, right in front of where um, the new Goggins real estate building is. Um, because of the construction, there's kind of no space for no space. And having a 15-minute space there, I think, would benefit that business and also businesses in the surrounding area. I really haven't met a 15-minute space. I think it's good for downtown. So I would urge approval. Across the street from there is Subway, Pam's Kick and Cuts, right. the Runner's Shop. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Although, you can't get a haircut in 15 minutes, but it's true. You can. Let's get a deep discount. I can. You can. <laughs> Noted. Uh, any other discussion on this? Um, this is in first reading. A roll call, please. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. That passes in first reading. will be revisited in our, in our first meeting of May. Um, there are no updates from me. Uh, are there any committee chairs who want to? Any no information requests or new business, so I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you all very much. Aye.